Hello, my name is Tim Sander and I'm a program manager on the Azure Cosmos DB engineering team. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about queries in Cosmos DB. I will be focusing specifically on Cosmos DB's SQL API, where you write queries in, in the SQL query language to query uh, documents as JSON. Now, before we dive into queries, the first thing we really want to understand is request units, or for short, RUs in Cosmos DB. Now, you want to think of RUs as basically a currency that you can use for database operations. So if you provision, let's say, 1,000 RUs on your Cosmos DB container, 1,000 RUs is basically an abstraction for the amount of memory, CPU, IOPS that we actually have behind the scenes uh, dedicated to your container. So if you provision 1,000 RUs, and let's say you're doing queries, and each of those queries costs you 10 RUs, 1,000 RUs divided by 10 RUs per query would mean you'd be able to run that query 100 times per second, essentially. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can minimize the number of RUs that each individual query needs to consume. And ideally, if you do this, it'll not only make your queries faster and more performant, but if you can reduce the amount of RUs each specific query needs, you can reduce the amount of total RUs that you need to provision on your container, which in addition to improving performance, lowers costs as well. We'll really go deep into some example queries in this video. These are the four that we'll cover, but the really message and kind of key themes we'll, we'll, we'll drive will be not on these specific ways you're optimizing queries, but what to look at in terms of query metrics uh, for understanding if a query uh, is using the index effectively, if it isn't, and then what, what essentially what change to make. Here are some great videos, uh, sorry, not videos. This is a great video you can reference. Here are some great troubleshooting guides in our docs that you can reference after you watch this video that are a really nice extension of what I'm gonna cover here for you today. So with that, I'm going to exit this PowerPoint and dive into some queries because everybody hates slides and, and likes demos really quite a bit more. So I've gone ahead and uploaded some sample data into this nutrition collection in my food database right here. Now, just take a sneak peek at the documents here. You want to think of each of these documents as basically a recipe. So uh, we have the description, the tags for the document, uh, a food group, and an array of different uh, nutrients, right? in uh, that, that recipe item. So we'll just come and run a very quick sample query. World's simplest query right here. We get the query results. And then we can also come to query stats and quickly observe the RU charge of the query. So let's run a query that doesn't run super optimally. So I'm going to have some queries ready to go. So I'm just going to paste this one here. Basically, what this query does is it filters, does an equality filter on description where description is equal to this value. So it's probably one of the world's simplest possible queries. Uh, really, any modern database should be able to handle this no problem and be pretty good at it. So I'll, I'll run that. And I get one result back, this document. And I take a look at the query stats. And the query used over 400 RUs, 414 RUs to be exact. Now, expand the query metrics a bit. Uh, if I come to scale and settings, I actually see that I only have 400 RUs provisioned on this container. Uh, so that means this query took me 414 RUs. I have 400 RUs provisioned. Uh, that means I can run this query basically uh, one time per second in this container, which is definitely not ideal and not very scalable. Uh, so we'll take a look at this query and understand what we can do to optimize it. In the query metrics, um, I'm only showing the top of the query metrics here is actually a whole bunch of other stuff you can scroll down and see. But the reality is that you really only need three of these metrics. You need the request charge. If the request charge is high, then this is a query you want to pay attention to and optimize. And you need the retrieved document count and the, whoop, and the, sorry for scrolling down, the output document count here. Now, request charge, straightforward, right? How many are used the query consumed? 
the retrieved document count is essentially how many documents did the query engine need to load to give you the results of the query. So in this case, the query engine needed to load or essentially scan about 88,618 8, documents to be exact. But the output document basically gives you the number of documents that were actually needed by the results of the query. Uh, typically, the output document count is going to either equal or be pretty close to the number of query results. Uh, in this case, it's equal. You needed one document in the results of the query. So we unnecessarily scanned through uh, over 8,000 documents since these were very far off. We can improve this by checking our indexing policy and seeing if we have the appropriate index created on our properties description in the where clause. So I'll come to scale and settings and take a look at the indexing policy. Now, by default in Cosmos DB, we index every property for you. And most developers will actually stick with this default in many cases as they're getting started with Cosmos DB. But if you have a workload in production, um, it doesn't take long. I, I would recommend taking a little bit of time in tuning the indexing policy. Uh, do keep in mind though, uh, because we're optimizing in, for reads and just indexing every property, this scenario that I'm highlighting here uh, actually isn't all that common. In most cases, you don't even have to think about uh, these specifics of the indexing policy. But let's say you went and you tried to optimize indexing policy and you, instead of including every path, only wanted to include specific paths. And to include description, you added this here, added in description. Well, this description is, does not match the property of my query. JSON is actually case sensitive. So in this case, I've actually spelled a property wrong in my indexing policy. So I'm gonna save that and apply the change. And hopefully now that my property is spelled correctly, uh, all my query will be essentially able to use um, uh, an available index. When I hit save, Cosmos DB in the background basically immediately went and started to create the necessary index uh, to, for uh, this, this query to run. So I hit save and I'm creating now behind the scenes an index on, on description. This index creation doesn't use your uh, throughput at a higher priority than your regular like, reads and writes. So if you were doing uh, reads against this container, or writes against this container on other properties, they're unimpacted. Uh, indexing in Cosmos DB, that RU consumption is at a lower priority than the rest of your database operations. Uh, so hopefully by now the index has been created. I go and I run this query and I get my one result again. But now instead of requiring 400 RUs, I only require eight. So really nice improvement there. By paying attention to whether the retrieved document count and output document count were equal, uh, we knew whether to take a look at our indexing policy and just double check that each of the properties in our work clause were indexed. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how you can optimize some queries with an order by clause. So I'm going to paste in this query here. Uh, it also has a where filter and an equality filter with food group, but then it goes and sorts the results, the query results by timestamp. And when I run this query, I'm going to run the whole query, not just part of it. There we go. Uh, we see it uses 21 RUs, which is not so bad, but it is a little on the high side. And we also see that retrieved document count is, again, quite a bit higher than output document count. So there's an opportunity to improve this query's performance with indexing. If these are not equal, indexing is definitely something in most cases we should think about. So looking at this query here, I see that it is order by. And anytime you see a query with order by, a bell should go off in your mind that, oh, order by. I should think about adding a composite index to this query. To be exact, here's the composite index I'll want to add. I have food group in my filter and timestamp in the order by clause. So I'm going to come into my indexing policy and paste this composite index right here. It's basically a composite index that is an index combined for food group and timestamp. So I'll go ahead and save that just to get that composite index starting to apply while, while I'm uh, explaining a bit more. Uh, we basically right now have this filter and this order by. And right now, because we don't have a composite index for these properties, 
uh, we need to evaluate the where filter here and the order by separately. And then basically kind of take the intersection of those results. And that's not as efficient as just serving order by directly from the index and having uh, our where filter also be served by that same uh, index essentially. So a composite index will greatly improve this query's performance. Now, in order to have this query utilize the composite index, what we'll have to do is add on the, the food group property to the order by clause. And this is required to tell the query to utilize the composite index. So now, if I go and I run this query, you see that the RU chart is much lower down from over 20 RUs to just four RUs here. Uh, so composite indexes can be a great way to optimize any query with an order by clause. So if your query has order by in it, and you notice that retrieve document count isn't quite equal to output document count, great candidate to be optimized with the composite index. Uh, but in general, even beyond that, you might have a query that's efficiently using your existing indexes, uh, where retrieve document count might be equal to output document count. Um, and you might even want a composite index there, and it might even offer a further improvement. So always great to look at those if you have a query with order by. Now, next thing I want to talk about isn't exactly related to indexing, but in working with arrays in Cosmos DB. Now, this query here basically does a join, um, and a join in Cosmos DB, a self-join, is essentially a cross product between the tags, nutrients, and servings array. And it does this cross product of all the elements of these arrays, and then afterwards applies it, this filter on it here. Now, this query uses about 800 RUs. It's pretty high. And this query charge will go up quite a bit if the size of each of these arrays goes up. We're applying the filter after we've done this cross product here when the reality is that not all the documents match all these filters. So we're working with unnecessary documents for a longer amount of time in the query. So if we go and we rewrite this query to instead of applying the filter after the join, apply the filter before the join using a subquery, we can then see the query charge goes all the way down to 63 RUs. And this was without a change in indexing, uh, simply any time we're working with uh, joins in Cosmos DB and you're also doing a filter, it's helpful to apply the filter as a subquery before the join instead of a filter after the join. Just a really, really nice tip to uh, look out for and use anytime you're working with arrays in Cosmos DB and, and want to do joins. So the next query I'm going to talk about is really quite a bit simpler. I'm going to grab that query and paste it in here. And I'll go run it. And the charge is only eight RUs. It really doesn't look this high. Um, but what's very important to note here is this query filters on description and I'm partitioned on the food group property, which means that this query is a cross partition query that must fan out and check uh, all my partitions. And I don't have very much data right now. I only have, I think, like 60 or 70 megabytes, and I don't have very many RUs. So at this small scale, this problem isn't quite so evident, but uh, rest assured that if I had a lot of data, this query would cost quite a bit more RUs. Uh, and that's because, again, it's a cross-partition query. Uh, I don't have my partition key included in my where filter here. Now, of course, it's not possible to have all your queries be in partition. But it is something, if possible, if you have a really read-heavy workload, it is something you should think about. So if, let's say, my uh, scenario here very frequently filtered on description, obviously I can't do much in my query itself to make this query single partition, but I could factor that into my partition key choice to possibly uh, partition on description in that case. Uh, just as an example, this was a query that returned one property that was cross partition. This is another query that returns one property, and this is going to be in partition, single partition, because I'm partitioned on food group. If I run this query, I see that it uses three RUs. Even with this reasonably small amount of data, there was a small difference. 
if I have more data and I have more RUs, the difference is going to be much bigger and more noticeable. So if you have a small amount of data, cross partition queries uh, maybe aren't worth worrying about too much. Um, and if you have a small amount of RUs, probably not worth worrying about too much either. But if you do have a lot of data in your container and you're running a certain kind of query really, really frequently, uh, this is definitely something you'll want to think about as, as well. I hope these initial uh, kind of introduction to query optimizations in Cosmos DB, I uh, hope it was helpful. We have a really nice doc here that you can use that highlights all the stuff I talked about in this video, plus a ton more of great optimization. It walks you through how to get query metrics and then what to do depending on the retrieve document count and output document count values. Thanks again for watching the video. Uh, definitely check out this doc. Uh, link is below. Thanks again.